So, uh, virtual reality is an artificial reality, so we should engage all of our senses. And coming, I actually kind of think this is a little sad. I think that coming from web and mobile desktop design, it's usually very, it's, it's a little sterile for me. It's very quiet, and we don't leverage sound effects for interaction design as much, I think, as we could. Um, and that's, I think, when you're designing for virtual reality, that's a great thing to think about, because instead of, like, overloading, you know, the, the screen or the textual information or visual information, think about using audio. Think about even just using dialogue to inform as a feedback mechanism to tell the user things that are going on, because, again, we use our ears, we talk to people, we hear things, you know, so this is, this increases that sense of immersion. And sound effects are also really, really useful for promoting delightful interaction designs. Um, you know, I was trying this one game called uh, Vanishing Realms on, on the Vive, and visually it, it looks like a mobile game, right? Like it's like super stylized, like super flat and stuff like that. And it's kind of like this sort of Zelda-ish kind of game where you're in a creepy dungeon and you're going around collecting gold and you pick up keys and unlocking doors and stuff like that. And I, I picked up this key and I, I, and I unlocked the door and I pulled this switch. Now, the switch could just make like a little click, it could make a little beep or something like that, but instead it was like, shh, boom. You know, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, it's like there's something, and it just, it just really, really put you in that moment. And because they also, a lot of these game engines, they have spatial 3D audio, the immersion is, is, is incredible. You know, so it, it just, the capacity for VR to really surprise you is really, really astounding. So um, just think about using audio to suggest that we're similar to you or that sense of reality and to make your interactions delightful. Um, that's what we talk about when we want in UX, right? We want to delight our users. So um, user research considerations for VR. Um, so obviously comfort and motion sickness are very important. So these should be the top priorities when you're asking talking to your users, what did you think of this experience? How comfortable was it? You want to make sure not to be too beating about it, but, you, you know, um, so you don't introduce bias and be like, uh, you know, how much of this make you want to throw up? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so definitely think about motion sickness and comfort. Um, also, an interesting thing, uh, users of Asian descent tend to um, statistically be uh, genetically slightly predisposed to motion sickness. So if you're dealing with a high motion type of experience, make sure that, you know, in your demographics that you're trying to get at least some uh, Asians in there, people of Asian descent, uh, for that worst case analysis. Because once you release your app, you don't know who you're going to, I mean, you do have a target market and a persona, but you do, you're not going to be sure who's going to be trying it. So it's good to kind of always keep that sort of uh, worst case scenario potentially in mind. And just don't don't assume that like uh oh it's fine you know nobody's going to throw up when they use it. Okay, so um, and also you can also obtain video output uh, from VR. Um, this actually proves to be very challenging when you're doing user research for VR. Is that you kind of have to walk people through it and ask them what are you seeing? What are you seeing? This is how you this is how you do this. This is how you do that. Um, there are solutions that you can use to get that video output. So if you're recording users, you can both watch them and also see what they're seeing which can be really super helpful. Um, more research, research tools also. Um, this is a heat map. So you got, are you familiar with heat mapping tools like Hotjar uh, for websites or uh, desktop experiences, mobile experiences? So they do have this for game engines and for VR. And it's an analytical tool that basically analyzes user positions. You can customize it so you can say, what are users doing at this particular moment? Where are they looking? So you can use this to kind of assess your, your spatial designs and your, your environment designs and get information about what your users are really doing. Um, this is currently working in Unity. Uh, Unity has a, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention about Unity and Unreal, they're both free. They both have free, um, you don't need to pay a fee to, to do it. They do have kind of higher tier services, but you know, there's a lot of information out there for you to get started with, with working with it. So um, heat mapping is with as part of uh, Unity's analytics package, and it is uh, currently working. Uh, it's not working in Unreal, which is a little sad, uh, because it has in, in past versions of the engine. So we're up to Unreal Engine 4 now, uh, and uh, it has worked in the past on Unreal Engine 3. Um, from what I know, um, it's not currently on their roadmap. I do hope they get back into their roadmap, because it's a very useful analytics and analysis. Tool.